CS, this is, this, this case is kept especially for you, CS Yadav. CS, this case was especially for you because we discussed in your talk that about uh, uh, how much activity the patients of the knee surgery can are allowed. So this patient was a very keen player, he wanted to play and uh, I preferred this patient, the mobile very enjoyed and uh, that's the photograph the patient took. Uh, Got it, got it himself through his friend, and that's the way. Uh, 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 this patient is now around seven years follow up. Uh, with, uh, excellent. So that place was four days ago. Sir, I just have a question. Now, if you were to operate on this knee, it's a 75 year old gentleman, yeah. but expecting this level of activity, you said you will do a CR in a yeah. 70 plus? Absolutely. Now, if you do a CR knee yeah. in a 70 plus or yeah. 75 year old, uh, how good do you think their PCL is at that age to, uh, you know, the CR basically ensures that your femoral rollback, your everything, in a younger individual, I understand. It's just, it's just a thinking. Well, there's too much made about the role of the PCL in the, P, in the CR knee. Sure. It acts as a tether. Okay. The major problem in joint replacement surgery is not the PCL, it's the ACL. We take out the ACL in every knee, and that actually destroys the kinematics in the knee. The engineers do a great job to try and preserve the kinematics, but it has a major effect upon every joint replacement. The PCL, I think, is secondary. You still get great rollback with the CRD. You still, it still functions. If you look at uh, the revision rates for CRDs in our registry, they are lower than for PSDs. And if you look at um, functional results in CRDs, even in this age group, they're equally as good as PSDs. Yes, the PCL may be aging. Yes, it doesn't, uh, any, oste any osteoarthritic knee, the morphology of the PCL is abnormal. It isn't a normal ligament. But it's a big, thick tether, and it's always there. I've done, I've, I cannot remember ever seeing an absent PCL. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true, it's always an absent case here, but, not sure. but has your, uh, this practice of doing a CR over 70, yeah. has this been your routine over the years or has it changed no, recently? No, until, until 1997 I did a CR knee in every patient. Okay, so I only it. changed to the PS knee um, in the late uh, 1990s because the kinematics are better with the PS knee. Yeah, that's but what I'm concerned about is where. And because of the wear characteristics are better, theoretically, in the PS knee, and even better in the mobile bearing knee. But what's changed now is polyethylene. Polyethylene yes. is a different material now. And the newer polyethylenes are showing just as good wear rates, uh, with or without uh, PS or mobile bearing. Then just a quick thought process. Then if that is the case, why not a PS with an RP in such an individual? Because if you're concerned about backside yeah. wear, if well, you're uh, that's what I do. No, the, the I don't time, this, this well, you uh, can do. I have no problem putting a PS RP into this patient, but at 75, I know any knee I put in at 75, whatever the patient does, is going to survive 10 to 15 years. Okay. He'll be 90. And, and, and he won't be playing uh, golf. Then. He won't be playing golf. Then. He won't be playing. Not at 90. No, no. Uh, no I'm not about a 75, I was at age group. Wanting to get back to golf. There's, you see, there's no evidence that a PS. Is any better in terms of survivorship at any age? Actually, oh, sure. there's theoretical that's evidence yeah, that that's where the characteristics are better. There's no clinical data yet. There's no data yet on that. And the same is true of mobile bearings. There's no clinical data yet that mobile bearings will out, are outlasting fixed bearings. Well, there's a little bit maybe. There's certainly no evidence that's a better functioning knee than a fixed bearing. Unless, 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 unless it's a revision, then it definitely is better. Right. Well, in that subset, especially in plus 70 and plus, do we have enough, because I haven't seen enough data on PS versus CR. That's See, I was saying this particular knee, that left knee, I would have used, I, it's, it's always difficult to judge on these x-rays, but I would put a unicomber in that, in a 75. Dr. Phil. So, uh, Mr. Phil, my question to you will be that how long is the, you, you expect the unicorn dialer to last? Oh, revision rates in patients over 70 are close to revision rates in total. In, in an active 70? Yeah, absolutely. They are. The, the problem with unis is young patients. That's where unis fail. In 50-year-olds, revision rates in the registry are about 25% in 10 years. 
in 10 years. That, that, that's what my objection is. That for an active man, if you do a unique old dialogue. But activity in a 70 year old is a completely different game to an activity in a 50 year old. And even though even the most active 70 year old is still not as active yes. as a 50 year old. Yes. Dr. Phil, are you concerned with the late failures of PCL in elderly? Because I have recently seen a case where the patient comes with instability because he had a uh, CRE. It, it, it is rare. It is rare. Yeah. I can think of only the late and, and no problems at all. And, and uh, Except I for the gross ones where you may require to be yeah, yeah, the, 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 the dish is there. Once you've got an altered congruent liner, there's no, no, no instability at all. But, but even then, there was a paper from Nick Fillion in Bournemouth in the mid-90s where they did a comparison of CRDs and CRDs with resection of PCL and a standard polyethylene component. Now, in five years, there were no differences. None. But, I mean, we would all argue that at 10 years, you would start to see a difference because you would be getting a lot of shear on the polyethylene and therefore, with that sort of polyethylene, there would be real problems with wear. He never published a 10 year result, so I don't know what they were. And can do it. On that same note, I mean, yeah, we know that if you take off the cruciate, your radio movement increases. It's the PCA. You know? No, it, it, it does to a certain extent, definitely. Do you think this will add to the stability? Yes, exactly. So that's what the, what the purpose is. But yeah, that's not to cut the PCA and then put it as what? No, no, no. That, that's that will always come with constraint. Yes, yes. That, that will be adding the constraint as well. Right. So the next case here is uh, the subluxated knee joint. So what do you do in a who would like to sit on the floor? Uh, so that's what it is. This is Yes, that's it. And, and then the biggest problem is, Mr. Phil, that you, you, when you remove the implant, you find a large flexion gap, it's a very, very large flexion gap, and not only just the large question there, but also the medial instability. Um, go back to an x-ray. Yes. Uh, yeah. If you look at that femur, it's, uh, there is a bit of curve on it. Um, you're, gonna re you're revising this knee. Whether when you do a revision, generally you're putting a stem. Certainly we would. We'd be stemming the femur because we'd be augmenting the femur to bring the joint line down. And what we learned from, from quite a lot of time ago is that if you use stems on the femur, particularly the long stems, it drives it into the diaphysis. When that happens, it drives the femoral component forwards. You, you, you end up with huge flexion gaps and snug extension gaps because the femur is actually in the wrong position. And what we always do now, in every revision, is we actively flex the femoral component. So we read only in the distal part of the femur. We read posteriorly to bring the femur right back. We oversize if we can. We'll either use a sleeve or a cemented stem for fixation, because we don't want to use a long stem. But the key is to close down that flexion gap. And you can only do that by shifting the implant position and enlarging it. And I'm sure you must have done something like that. Oh, because you, you angle the, you angle it into the distal third. Well, you use your remus. You read. <coughs> when, it's, it's an interesting exercise. We, I do a lot of cadaver things when we're doing revisions. If you take a remus, make the hole in the femur, and put the remus up, if you start posteriorly and ream with it, you reach a point where it suddenly moves forwards. And you can measure that on the remus. So that's your limit, that's how far you go. So you keep as posterior as possible, you want to be on the posterior cortex for the distal segment of the femur. And sometimes with a sleeve stem combination, it's too long. Well, if that's the case, we take the stem off and just use the sleeve for fixation, which you can usually do anyway in the femur. But you've just got to get it backwards. And every revision I would suggest to you, you should aim to do that. Because if you use a longer stem, into the diaphysis, it will drive you forwards. Right. If you use a short stem, cemented stem, you can put it where you want. Well, that is the reason in the, in the, the few implant, 
to have the two millimeter post minus or two millimeter plus shifting and you need a lot more than that. Yes. In fact. You might require more than two millimeter. Oh, and a short stubby cemented stem you can bring the correct. thing backwards. Correct. Uh, correct. Mr. Phil, what would you do medially? Because you know that clearly the MCL is not as strong. It's not as good, but it's intact. Yes. Right. I would do this. I would, well, I, I would use a, a TC3 in that instance because you need some control inflection. The only way you're reasonably going to do that is with, a, with, with the implant cap. You can try timing the MCL, but we've done that over the years and it largely just fails. But I've never been impressed with doing medium <coughs> advancements. It never seemed to work. So we just protect the inflection with a with a bigger cam, a TC3 and LCCK. Uh, Adil, do you have any any comment on this? Can ask again. All right. Fifteen. Right. Right. So once there's so much of there's so many apparent pictures which make correct when you are putting the trial. So right. final judgment will always come when you are putting the trial. Right. So I'll, I'll show what we did. That is also increased. We did the an increased distal femoral cut so that the more uh, more extension gap is achieved. To balance the flexion gap. But we did we use the larger tibial insert. We use the one size larger femur and we, we refuture the LCF. Uh, you have not used the TC3, you used no, the standard. Use the it was not required. It, it, is, it is a clear three segment. Yes. But it was not too much. I think 15 or 17. 17, 17. It must be 17. Because if you see the, the, the last, in the last slide, you see that there is a very large gap. And that proves when I said yeah, ultimate right. decision is done when you are put up trial. Right, right. And that's what you see in the result. <coughs> but uh, Dr. Sama, you had to have the application of the structure of the medium side for the last two years. Right. So, right. 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 We just re-sutured that. That's all. But how much that work, we don't prove. <coughs> and about yeah. the re-sutured of the, of, the, of the MCL that Mr. Phil was talking, uh, uh, I have this very interesting case for that, and you were very right. That suturing the MCL, like you see in this patient, operated two year follow up case for total knee arthroplasty, and this was my own case uh, for severe virus and flexion deformity and osteoporotic bone. The patient was going well for two years, and then she came with what you see on the right side. The middle side was opening up. Lateral side also. That way there was a medial tightening. And that's what we, we see in a lot of patients uh, here that you have a very severe virus deformity. You release as much you, you, you can, but still you will find that lateral laxity is still there. In some of these cases, I do the lateral collateral ligament tightening these days. In a very severe virus deformity. So here, I, I'll just go ahead with this. So this was the situation we managed post of post ligament advancement, the lateral lateral epicondylar osteotomy, and shifting it proximally, and then uh, uh, tightening up the lateral collateral ligament, increasing the larger polyethylene, and patient did well for some time. Five years later, patient presented like this. So it is a seven year post, uh, and I have a very large series of these patients that is the severe virus and flexion deformities. Because these patients in a short follow up may be seemingly doing very well. But if you see them in a longer period of time, to 10 to 15 years, a lot of these patients will have the 
So that's why if I have to do a such a D four twenty today, uh, or even even at that time, probably the lot of cost constraints they, they limit our choice of the implant. I would use the extension stem. I would use the DC three implant, and I would I would try to uh, uh, release as much of the MCL and tighten the lateral quadrant a little bit. All in one. Any comment, Mr. Well, I think lateral laxity is not as critical as medial laxity. Right. You lose the medial sleeve completely, you've had it, you need a hinge. Right. Um, I, have done, I have done a couple of hamstring reconstructions of the medial side when I had a well-fixed implant that presented with a ruptured MCL. Um, so far, they're okay, but I worry about them a lot because I think even with a good hamstring reconstruction, it's not still not a normal MCL, um, and I th in this I say you can tolerate the lateral side more than you can the medial side, particularly because the weight bearing axis is usually a bit more medial. Um, still, will be anxious about advancement. Uh, it's just got a bad reputation in my hands because of what we used to do years ago. It always, it never worked. And also, the lateral collateral is one of the supporting structures on the lateral side, but it isn't the only one. Like the MCL is on the medial side. You've still got the post-lateral corner, you've still got <coughs> IT band at the front. And so is it just a lateral advancement enough? Do you need to reinforce the post-lateral corner? Because that's what I do in an athlete who had a, a, a post-lateral, quite a lateral instability. So is it just a lateral advancement enough? Yeah. 